Hello and welcome to this video. Version 7.19 is about to be released and I thought I'd give you a little preview of what's new. I've picked out 10 points from various areas so there should be something for everyone. But these are by no means all the new features in 7.19. You can find the rest on our multi-campus platform. There you'll find a detailed video for each new feature and a package so you can try out the updates yourself as you go along. I'll include the link to the multi-campus for you. It will be in the description. So I'd say let's get started with the points right away. All right, let's jump into the first small nice new feature in version 7.19.20. It was done right there in the options. We've added buttons to this field for saving the parameter displays. By default, this isn't enabled during installation, but I can enable it and I've already copied a default value table and named it new in 7.19. And now I am going to create an edit using this particular tool. Previously, if I started changing any of the parameters that differed significantly from my default values, like I am doing here with 0.2, I only ever had the option to save back all the changed default values as a complete whole. But if I only wanted to save back a single parameter, that wasn't possible. Now, however, you can immediately see that top solid checks whether a parameter differs from the default and then suggests this save icon to me. If I click on it, I immediately get a message that it will be saved in NEU 7.19. I click OK, and then it is written directly into it. If I then create the same thing again, this time in face milling, with this tool, I can immediately see in the settings that I now have the 3 millimeter. The second general innovation is quite extensive and will be described in more detail in the campus course. This concerns the presets. These have been completely revised and a new filter has been added so that you can now also filter by material. And we have the option to automatically select presets if there is only one clear choice. And here you can specify whether you always want this to happen, whether you want to be asked about it or whether it shouldn't be done at all. Here I just have a simple example where I create a machining operation. I have two documents. One is aluminum and the other is stainless steel. Then I simply create a face milling operation on this surface and now the machining starts once I have selected a tool with the standard values as they are stored in the default settings. And now, for example, I could change certain things like setting the step down to five millimeters and the stock allowance on the bottom and set the stock allowance on the wall to one millimeter. That means every time I machine this material with this tool, I want these settings to be applied automatically. Saving the presets remains the same, meaning I go to my presets window and here I have the name. I'll call this Roughing D20 Alu for now. Save it. And in the save window, I will then be asked which attributes I want to match it to and then I specify the material. As mentioned, this is explained in detail in the campus course. Then I confirm it. Now it's saved. I can also cancel it here for now. Then I select face milling again and choose my tool. And we can see that it immediately says here mode for automatic presetting. That means it has automatically selected my feed and allowances here without me having to do anything. I've already done the same thing for the stainless steel case which means I now create a face milling operation there and I have a similar tool. For stainless steel, I would probably use a different tool, but this one also has a diameter of 20 and a similar cutting length. I select the tool and Top Solid also automatically selects a preset here where I specified that for this material with this tool, I want it to automatically create a boost machining operation. This presents a truly huge opportunity to fully automate your workflow and to incorporate presets even more strongly into your programming. This is a very nice and welcome innovation. Now let's move on to the innovations in the 2.5D area. To do this, I'll first create a face milling operation with this tool. And now TopSolid is pointing out to me that certain toolpaths of this operation are outside the travel limits because this machine can only move a certain distance over the center in the Y direction. 
Up until now, we would have drawn a sketch to specify that the face milling should only take place within this sketch. With version 7.19, that's no longer necessary because the new feature is that we've now got a new tab in the geometry section called Limits. When I activate this, it looks quite similar to roughing. This means I can restrict the X and Y values here either by entering value points or simply by dragging with the mouse. That means I could now just restrict this value in that very direction here. But sometimes it might happen that I don't know exactly how far the machine can move past the center. And for that, we also have this button here, which lets me select machine limits. And then it automatically trims the toolpath to the corresponding machine boundaries. If I now generate the simulation, we can see that I'm no longer outside the travel limits. You can also combine this XY limit and machine limit. That means on the one hand, I could say, I want to take my machine limit into account in the Y direction, but in X, I also want to further restrict my path. And in this particular way, you will no longer need to meticulously draw any sketches. The next new feature is in the drilling cycles. Here, I have an example where I am drilling with this tool. You can already see here that my drilling tool is colliding. This isn't new either, and I could, for example, say that I want to deselect certain holes. But if you can imagine having 40 distinct holes that could potentially cause significant collisions, you might truly wish for a more elegant and efficient solution than deselecting each one individually. Of course, you could also increase the tool overhang, but in some cases you can't or don't want to do that. So now, new in version 7.19, we can readily activate this new tab, which is specifically called Collision, that has been added. The existing holes are still clearly displayed, but now they appear in red, and importantly, they are no longer used in the toolpath calculation. If for any particular reason, I later come to realize that I actually can indeed increase the tool's overhang, I can very quickly and easily make that necessary change, and it will be taken into account almost immediately. This conveniently gives us a very practical and efficient solution to directly deselect any colliding holes that might be present. In the 3D area, a new option has been added to remachine remaining areas from a previous operation. To demonstrate this, I have created this finishing operation using a relatively short tool, and under collision settings, I specify that tool paths which would cause collisions should be omitted. And now we have the option on page 7.19 under optimization, there is the function tool path for rest machining. And here we can already see that these remaining areas which were extracted from the first machining operation because they would have caused collisions are displayed directly here. So all you simply need to do is choose a longer appropriate tool that can perform the necessary machining, and then you can subsequently create the operation. And you can see here how incredibly fast it calculated this operation to machine these remaining material areas. So it's a nice operation for reworking such areas. In the five axis area, a completely new strategy has been added called five axis finishing, and it's designed, among other things, to machine undercut areas in five axes. If I open it briefly, we can also see here in the settings that you have many options to configure something. This is also covered in detail in the campus course, and also with several different examples. But for now, I'll just create one operation here so we can see what this five axis strategy can do. Here, I can easily select my machining surfaces in this specific case by color. Then I have my undercut area clearly defined here. I will then select a direction based on my main primary direction, and I want it to be at 45 degrees. And then I can have this operation created, and once it's completely done, I can simulate the whole process to effectively demonstrate this particular case. As mentioned, there are several more examples of this in the campus course, and that would be the five axis strategy, five axis finishing. In turning, the first new feature is one that's quick to explain but has been requested very often. 
specifically in finishing. I've created a finishing operation for this. We now have the same limiting options as we do in roughing. That means it's exactly the same one-to-one -one identical. For example, I could say that I want to limit my operation, which currently goes from here to there in Z, based on a point, this point, and then I only turn from here to there. What has been newly added to both strategies is this checkbox, namely reverse limit. This is now available in both roughing and finishing, so I don't have to say I want to work from my start point to that point, but rather I can work from that point to the end. And with that, I can then reverse the limit value. That would be the first new feature in turning. Another great new feature has been added to turning in the scenario where we have synchronized multi-channel machines. Specifically, we can now see the timeline for the individual channels down here, and I also have exclamation marks here, because the control rules indicate that there are conflicts, such as mismatched rotation directions or, for example, cutting conditions that do not match. And here, the command to resolve rule conflicts has been completely revised. Of course, there are now a few new checkboxes that have been added here. The details of how this works are, of course, explained in a campus course, but for now, I'll just run this command once so we can see what happens. So it quickly calculates or processes for a moment. And now we can see that it has resolved the rule conflicts it had and has automatically set synchronization points at the relevant places. It even goes so far as to recognize when a channel can run simultaneously. I can quickly simulate that here. For example, that after drilling, it recognizes that two milling operations can run at the same time. So especially when you're synchronizing multi-channel machines, this is a huge relief because you get a synchronization suggestion right away, which you can then fine-tune if you want. But I really think this is a fantastic new feature in turning. There's also a completely new strategy in turning, which is mainly used on Swiss-type lathes. We're talking about polygon turning or polygon milling, depending on what you want to call it. You can see the operation here, polygon turning. Here too, I can select my tool and then one face of the polygon, and it can be a polygon with two faces or three faces or eight faces. I select one face and Top Solid automatically knows how many faces need to be machined. Otherwise, I can also switch to set it manually if I want. The ratio, because the C axis and the spindle axis need to be synchronized, is calculated by Top Solid based on the number of teeth on the polygon tool which you can see here, and the number of faces. That means in this case, we just need to confirm with OK and our polygon is machined right away. It's that simple. I can also start the simulation to see what the simulation would look like and how this bar would appear. As the last new feature and as an extra, a machining process that isn't widely known but is important in some industries is hail machining. Let's imagine I have a narrow, deep rib here that I want to machine, for example, for cooling purposes. It can sometimes be quite difficult with a milling cutter. Here we now have a kind of stroking motion where the tool follows the contour and can therefore move through this groove much faster. Some machine manufacturers also offer a machine cycle for this. For example, with Herbal, it's called speed forming. But the general term for this is hail machining. This is an example of it. The next example would be, for instance, when we have to machine sealing surfaces in apparatus engineering that are not round, for example. This base surface is where a seal will be placed. When milling, you sometimes have the problem that you can't achieve a perfect seal. And with this very useful tool, you can then precisely follow these intricate contours along the entire path. That would be the second possible application. And there is also a third possible and very interesting application where this specialized slotting tool has a very hard diamond at its tip. And then consequently, we are moving directly into the exciting field of optics. Where a very high surface quality must be achieved, almost mirror-like, where we can say that we can also perform three-dimensional machining, for example, here, 
where the tool then moves in the x, y, and z directions and rotates as well. And we can then imagine that if there is a diamond at the front and the chip is removed directly from the surface, an extremely high surface quality can be achieved because we achieve a continuous chip flow without interruption. This is called high gloss machining. If anyone is interested in this, feel free to reach out to us. For everyone else, it's just a nice piece of information that Top Solid is also advancing in such areas. That's it for this video. I hope there was something in it for everyone. Feel free to check out our Motif campus if you're curious about the other updates. Let us know in the comments which new feature you liked best, and we appreciate every like. See you next time.